Hi there. Uh, I hope this this video is going to turn out okay. Um, I'm doing it in a different area of the shop because I don't have. I'm I'm a very untidy worker. I'm afraid, and I don't have a lot of uh, areas where I can do this kind of thing um, away from any of the machines. Anyway, um, this is uh, just a. I, I, I figure it's going to be just a really a small video. Um, <clears throat> it relates to parts that I'm building for the uh, the French designed uh, uh, petite lime shaper, which is a bench shaper um, about that size, I guess you could say. And um, I scaled it down to 0.8 because it's too big to do on the take equipment at full size so um, I figured that point eight would be about the largest I can do on the machine especially on the milling machine so anyway this is um, uh, the cross slide um, maybe I'll go and get the cross slide just hang on a minute I'm as usual, I'm not very well organized. Um, uh, get this. Put this under here. Uh, I think this will will um, will work. Uh, just put that under there. So. Um, this is the the cross slide uh, where the ram goes backwards and forwards in this direction and um, it's a hand shaper and there's an automatic feed on the cross slide to move the the ram across the surface of the job that you're machining and um, these are the parts that are basically um, what the full size had and um, it's not exactly a, a complete copy it's it's just a, a, a mock-up really of the way it worked on the full size uh, this is a, a mild steel um, uh, wheel that um, that I machined and it's got 12 teeth on it and this is the 3.8 lead screw um, that I put a, a slot in all the way down and machined the two ends to length and eventually that will uh, go in like that so it'll go down below and this of course will uh, be in the trough there and this is the the system that is going to move the the cross like the uh, the ram across and um, what I did was I don't have any any keyway uh, equipment um, uh, so I came up with this idea of um, placing a a slot right the way through in the bottom of the V of one of the teeth and coming down into the center of the 3.8 diameter hole and the idea was that I, I would make a key up and uh, and this is the key uh, maybe I'll get a roll and you'll be able to see some of the some oh dear <laughs> uh, some of the sizes of these parts um, they're, they're quite small this is one eighth diameter uh, one eighth thickness um, and that's um, ground stock uh, we call it gauge plate in England but over here I believe it's it's um, ground stock and um, 
it's just a water hardening uh, material and with the mild steel what I'm going to do there is I'm going to case harden the mild steel just to toughen up the the teeth um, so um, what I did was I made this this little key and I marked one side of the key uh, just there for identification and I marked the tooth that corresponds with this face and there's you probably can't see it I don't know but there's a little pop mark down in the in the bottom of the V there so um, what happens is that uh, I'm going to be assembling this when it's all complete assembling this on here and then it will sit down in there and um, I drilled a hole in the face of one of the teeth and came out this side uh, and it's a it was a um, 0 .060, 0 0.061 diameter the hole and that's how I first started and then after drilling the hole I used a little tapered pin tapered dowel a reamer to ream the hole out uh, through there like that through there okay and it comes out it doesn't actually come out but it that's where it is so the idea is that um, that means that I can assemble the key in the just drop it down in the in the slot it's quite a nice fit and line it up with the slot in the in the uh, wheel just push it down there like that and then I got this little dowel a tapered dowel um, it's um, it's 82 thou diameter at the top end at the thick end and it tapers down to a small size smaller size down there and that's going to go in here and it goes through the key and then when it's finally assembled it will be tapped into the hole until it's tight and that will um, lock the key um, in there. Now the key has a, I milled a couple of, uh, of um, uh, steps on each side of the key so that I could get a pair of pliers bought a, 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 a pointed nose pliers and get down in there and just grip it and pull it out if I needed to remove it um, I could have gone I could have gone right the way through here at uh, one end um, with the slot but I decided that I didn't want to do that so so anyway this now um, slides along and and moves the lead screw when it turns so this when when it's sitting in here like this in its position uh, on the on the ram the bit that goes forward and back and shaves off material there's a a bar a steel bar or rod was flat stock anyway and it swings from a pendulum up here and there's two holes either side uh, where you can place a pin either in the back or in the front according to the direction that you want the automatic feed to go and so 
when the ram comes when the ram goes back the bar will make contact with one of the one of the teeth and with the pin behind it the bar becomes solid and moves that around as it goes and then on the way back it flips because it's it's floating so it it turns the it, it turns the lead screw in either direction according to where you put this pin either side of the of the pendulum bar and um, it moves the carriage backwards and forwards left and right so so that's that's uh, as far as I've got at this stage um, the next operation will be after I've hardened the key and the teeth will be to locate the two holes in the plates at each end for the center height and a clearance on the bottom of the trough for the gear for the uh, the, the uh, wheel tooth tooth wheel and um, and then it'll be continue on from from there so that's that's um, basically what I've done this is uh, 11 11 and a quarter inches long from one end to the other um, so as you can see the uh, it's it's relatively small but it it will have probably a six inch stroke I would imagine um, the original had a seven inch stroke maximum um, and you've probably seen some of my other videos uh, earlier on uh, where the base has been machined with the T-slots in the base and uh, this is not completely there's a I have to add um, uh, like uh, stabilizer bars underneath and around the front and that's going to be another job uh, originally this this would have been a casting um, and uh, and machined as a casting on the original so anyway that's that's as far as I've got so far and uh, just thought I'd put it on video and let people see how I'm getting on with it okay thanks for watching and uh, I'll, I'll be back thank you